Hello everybody, my name is Jen the Caffeinated Crafter and welcome back to my channel. I see Gracie walking across down there. Uh, today is going to be a stitch with me and it's going to be another new start. We are going to start this cute little hedgehog. I uh, picked up this chart off of the freebie table at the last retreat that uh, or the only retreat I've ever been to. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. My milestone for this little guy, my first milestone is going to be 500 stitches. We're not going to get 500 on this video, but we'll go ahead and throw like about 100 in or so. I'm using this little tally counter. I showed it in the last video of, um, hang on one second, I forgot what symbol I was doing. Oh yeah, that one. Um, I'm using this little tally counter to um, track my stitch count. So how is everybody doing today? I'm gonna try to remember to keep this in the frame this time. I had a hell of a day today, oh my God. I woke up late. I'm supposed to be at work at eight, I woke up at 8.06. <laughs> I think what happened, so what had happened was, I think, I turned my alarm off, rolled over, and went back to sleep. <laughs> because I woke up, when I woke up at 8.06, my phone was laying in the bed next to me. I was like, ah, crap. So, I was in a rush to get to work. It took forever to get there. And, uh felt like it took forever to get there. It really didn't take forever. But then when I got there, the garage, we have two garages at the hospital, one in the front over by the women's center and then one in the back, which is where we park because that's where there's like a front entrance and a back entrance. And um, our clinic is in the back of the hospital. I'm gonna go down this way and then come back up because the rest of the, this color is going up. Um, but, uh, our clinic is in, I guess, what you would call the back of the hospital. So when I get to my the garage I normally park in, there was no parking. And so I had to go to the garage at the women's center on the other side of the hospital. And ended up parking on the roof on that one. And it's uh, a longer walk from the garage over there to the entrance of the hospital. Like it, I don't know, it just takes longer, right? So let me just make sure that I'm good here. Yeah. Uh, so I um, get all the way to the entrance, get inside, get over to the time clock to punch in, and I left my badge in the car. I was like, I am not walking all the way back out to my car for my badge. So I texted my boss. And I was like, hey, I forgot my badge. And he was like, why am I not surprised? <laughs> it's like, that is the first time ever that I forgot my badge. And I'm not going back to get it. So, anywho. Um, but yeah, it was just like, I don't know. It was just like a flub flub of a day. And it was like kind of busy, but not busy. I don't know. It was just, it was a very weird day. Anyway. Update on Mr. Whiskers. He is getting better bit by bit. If you hear any scratching, that was him. I uh, bought some of those. It was like last year. The Actually, no, it was two years ago. I... Uh, bought these like cardboard cat houses from Aldi. And I, they, I just never put them together. Like they were all folded up in boxes, but they, uh, they're cardboard cat houses. And then they have like this, um, that corrugated cardboard stuff that cats like to scratch. And I have them sitting in front of my TV and that was, that scratching sound was Mr. Whiskers scratching in that corrugated cardboard. 
So he apparently is feeling better because he hasn't done that in probably about a week or two. So that's good. His nose is finally cold and wet again, so the antibiotics apparently are helping. The vet called me yesterday. I think it was yesterday. Maybe it was the day before about his blood work. His blood work was fine. One, two, one, two, three. I messed up. One moment. Got a frog a stitch. Um, but his blood work was fine. And um, he, uh, his urine did show a UTI, which I'm not surprised because when she showed me the little thing of uh, pee that she had got from him, it had some, it was like blood tinge. So I'm not surprised it showed he had a UTI. And, uh, but he's been taking his antibiotic like a champ. He takes it right down. Doesn't fight me at all. Now I'm making sure I did that right. Yeah. Um. So he goes back to the vet on, he's not sneezing as much either. So that's good. Um, he goes back to the vet next Wednesday for a checkup. Hopefully he'll be in a better mood when I take him back to the vet next Wednesday. So. I don't know what to talk about now. I said everything I had to say <laughs> in seven minutes. <laughs> um, one, two, one, two. Uh, what, what can I talk about? Oh, I could talk about food. I'm always down to talk about food. Um, I gotta come up with uh, dinners for the boys when they come back to me on Friday. So me and my my ex share custody. We switch every Friday. So when I have them, I cook dinner almost every night. I mean, you know, there's always nights that you don't wanna cook. But I cook dinner just about every single night that I have them. And, um, I don't know, sometimes I have the hardest time, hopefully I remember, but sometimes I have the hardest time figuring out what I'm going to make them for dinner. Um, cause I mean, they're, they're 11 and 13 and they're both boys. So they eat like adults. So I have to like cook a lot of food. Um, and of course, you know, and it's like there's battles that you just don't want to battle. So it's one of those things where it's like, uh, you know, I could just cook what I want to and then eat it or starve. But I mean, why do that? I just ask them what they want to eat within reason. I mean, sometimes they joke around and they're like, Oh, can you make like lobster and you know fancy fancy crap? And I'm like, uh, no, we're not doing that. I mean, they're joking when they say it, but um, sometimes I get stuck in a rut and I make the same thing over and over because I can't think of anything else. And they're like, no help. So I'm like, what do you want for dinner? And they're like, I don't know. I don't know what I want. You can make whatever you want. And I'm like, I don't know what I want to make. That's why I'm asking you. And um. But I remember last week, Lachlan was asking me to make grilled cheese sandwiches and tomato soup. I think that's it for that little thing right there. So let me end this thread. Um, so hopefully I remember 
that he wants to do like grilled cheese. I think he said grilled cheese and tomato soup. So, of course, one of them always wants, it's not always both at the same time. One of them always wants me to make burgers. And I'm like, God, I hate, I hate making burgers because it's so messy. Like it, grease gets everywhere from the burgers. I mean, I don't cook in grease. They just naturally let off grease. Um, and we have what, uh, Peyton calls struggle meals. They're like really cheap <laughs> to make. Um, like some of my, some of my struggle meals. Let me see. Some of my struggle meals. What are they? They're like nice and nice and nice and cheap. Um, I don't want to hear no judgy comments about about stuff I cook sometimes. Because sometimes, like last week, I made them steak and scallops. <laughs> like, <laughs> these boys eat good sometimes. But um, one of the struggle meals I make is uh, poor man goulash. Where it's like you, uh, in one pot, you cook up macaroni and cheese. Like the boxed craft mac and cheese, right? And I usually make two boxes of it. Granted, I always have leftovers, but I always, I would, pre I prefer leftovers over not enough food, if that makes sense. Um, but uh, I usually cook up two boxes of macaroni and cheese in one pot. And then in a pan, I brown up some ground meat and you can do beef, turkey, whatever, chicken, I don't know, whatever you want, but any kind of ground meat. And you chop up an onion and throw that in there. Cook all that down. And then while it's cooking, or when it's when the meat is brown, you throw in a can of corn. You can use fresh corn if you want, but I just throw in a can of corn and a can of diced tomatoes, any kind of diced tomatoes you want. I drain the corn of the I almost said the fluid, the, what, what is it? Water. <laughs> and, um, but I leave the flu fluid. Oh my God. <sighs> Not water, the juice, whatever, the liquid. There we go. I leave the liquid in the can of tomatoes, but I drain it out of the corn. So you throw the corn and the tomatoes in the pan with the meat and the onion. And I cook that until the liquid evaporates from the tomatoes. And then you make the macaroni and cheese as you would normally do. And then you mix, am I doing the correct color? Yes, I am. Okay. Whew. <laughs> I just realized like crap. Um, and then you mix everything together. And then boom, there's your dinner. And it's like super quick. Like if you go ahead and chop up your onion, right? Like have your onion chopped before you get started. And then if you start cooking the, the meat and the onion, when you put the water on for the macaroni and cheese, by the time the mac and cheese is done, the meat mixture is done. So all in all, it could take less than 20 minutes, depending on how fast you can get your water to boil. Um, what's something else I like to make them? And I mean, I'm talking about like when it's like, I'm like, oh, we need to, we need to watch the dollars this week. Um, oh, struggle soup, as Peyton calls it. Um, get the ramen, the, um, you know, that, the ramen soup, the three minute, whatever, that's full of sodium. And, uh, cook it. Uh, so I put in, uh, 
large pot of water, of course, and when it boils, it, all right, hold on, Jesus Christ. That's why I can never be a, a cookbook author. I think I'm missing stitches on my tally counter too, but it's okay. Um, let me start over. So what you need for the struggle soup is ramen noodles, however many packs you want. I usually do one per person. Um, you need chicken. I usually will pick up like one of those rotisserie chickens from the grocery store and pull it apart myself. Um, but if uh, some store, if they don't have rotisserie chickens, like... I went to Aldi one time and they didn't they don't have rotisserie chickens but they did have over like where they had the um deli meat and cheese uh they did have a package of pulled rotisserie chicken um and uh but usually I'll get like a rotisserie chicken pull it apart and then some mixed vegetables, either frozen mixed vegetables, a can of mixed vegetables, whatever. So put some water on the stove. When it boils, you throw in the noodles with the seasoning packet. And, um, oh, and eggs. Um, throw the noodles in with the seasoning packet so that they can cook. And then um, I scramble up uh, like about three or four eggs in a cup. And then I dump that in and swirl it around so the eggs cook. Uh, and then when the ramen is just about done, I toss in the chicken because it's already cooked. So you don't have to worry about cooking it, right? Um, and the mixed veggies. Now, if they're frozen, of course, you got to throw them in sooner. But if, uh, if it's a can of mixed veggies, you can dump it in at the end. Because they just got to like warm through. Um, and then there's your struggle soup. It's pretty cheap. Pretty cheap to make. Yes, I know there's healthier ways to cook that stuff. But I tried doing it with like chicken broth. And just noodles. It just doesn't taste the same. I need the extra salt. What did I make for them last week? Last week I made them... Aldi has frozen scallops. Like in their freezer section, they have the big sea scallops. So I picked up, I'm just getting, cutting some floss off of my thing here. Um, they have the big sea scallops, so I picked up, I'll just do a really long thing, it's a 415 here. Um, so I have made them steak and scallops with some potatoes, and uh, what else did I make them? Oh, barbecue chicken drumsticks, and stuffing, and I don't remember all the stuff I made. They're very picky with their veggies, so it's kind of hard to make veggies for them that they're going to eat, you know what I mean? But they're they're warming up to them. They're just not the best about eating them. Um I made steak fajitas. Lachlan was cracking me up. My 11-year-old, he was cracking me up because I made the fajitas and I said, "Listen, I'm not going to sit here and pick through go through this and pick out what you don't want because he doesn't usually eat peppers. I'm like, I'm not picking the peppers out. If you don't want them, you got to pick them off yourself. Okay. And he started, he took a bite and he was like, wow, this is really good. He's like, mom, I'm actually eating the peppers. I was like, oh, good for you. Um, and I made, oh, I made chicken tostadas. So that rotisserie chicken I was telling you about, that Aldi has, that, that pre, basically it's a package of cooked chicken. Um, I made chicken tostadas, so they had tostada shells. And I did refried beans. I seasoned the chicken with some taco seasoning. 
Like I threw it in a pan to warm it up and I threw in a little bit of water so it wouldn't dry out too much and seasoned it with some taco seasoning. So I did the refried beans on the tostada shells and I topped it with the chicken and then put cheese on top of that and threw it in the oven to melt the cheese. And then I topped it with uh, lettuce and tomato and sour cream and guacamole. And the boys loved it. Where am I at? Oh, here we go. Um, the boys loved it. Like, oh, mom, you need to make this again. Okay. And I made my rice that I always make with it. The rice is super easy. You can, um, I don't know what to call it. You could call it salsa rice, maybe Spanish rice, I, I Mexican rice. I don't really know. I call it the Mexican rice so that the boys know what kind of rice I'm making. But um, I put some oil in a pan and then I throw the rice in like you're if you're making rice aroni like you like if you make rice aroni from a box you know how you how it says to melt butter and then put the the rice and pasta mixture in the pan and then like kind of cook it in that until it starts browning up I do that with the rice with a little bit of oil and um and then once I you know cook it for just a couple minutes I throw in a jar of salsa and it's a cup of rice that I use. I do one cup of rice and then once it's like kind of browned up just a little bit, toasted, I guess you could call it, um, I throw in a jar of salsa. And then depending on how liquidy the salsa is, will depend on how much water I put into the rice. I'll either do two cups of water or just shy of two cups of water so that the rice actually cooks. But if you put in two full cups of water with really, uh, hang on, I'm, trying to, I'm losing my place here. If you do two full cups of water and the salsa is really watery, it's gonna overcook the rice. So it just depends on how watery the salsa is. Like if it's a super thick salsa, then I'll go ahead and do two cups of water. And you just cook it for like 20 minutes. And then once it's done, you stir it up and boom, there's a side dish to go with your tacos. I feel like I'm all over the place talking about the food. Um, but I'm kind of talking about it so I can give myself some ideas for when I get them back next week. <laughs> like, oh, what do I want to make them? Um, oh, so the, the barbecue chicken drumsticks that I made, I just, I put the drumsticks in a pan, brushed them with some barbecue sauce and threw them in the oven and cooked them for like, I don't remember how long I cooked it until they were done. Right. And Lachlan's acting like it's the best thing on earth. He's like, oh my God, mom, this chicken is so good. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, dude, it's just barbecue sauce on drumsticks thrown in the oven. Like, is it really that good? But he was just raving about it. Mom, you got to make this again. And uh, let me see what else. I had Lachlan make dinner one night. He did just about everything. What was it one night we made? We made, um, I lost my place again. Jesus Christ. Um, we made, um, uh, fried pork chops. And I taught him how to bread the pork chops where you dip it in the, flour and then dip it in the egg and then dip it in the breadcrumbs and he did everything with the pork chops I think I made I don't even remember what the side dish was that we made with it 
but he did everything with the pork chops. He breaded them and then he put them in the pan and cooked them. I didn't tell Peyton because Peyton always gives him a hard time. I'm trying to teach my kids how to cook. They need that life skill. So I'm trying to teach them how to cook so that when they go off on their own, they know how to cook for themselves and then for their future partners, whoever they end up with. But at least so that they can cook by themselves, for themselves. My problem when I'm by myself is I can't just cook for one person. I can't, I can't do it. It's like physically impossible for me to cook for just myself. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, I've always been like that. Even when I was like in my 20s, single, before kids, before like before, you know, my marriage and all that, I always had such a hard time cooking for myself. Like if I make pasta, I make a whole box, no matter how many people are eating. If more than five people are eating, I make two boxes. But if even, you know, if it's just me, I make an entire box. I, I don't know, I can't cook. I can't cook a partial box. So I always have a hard time with that. Um, oh, speaking of pasta, something that my mom used to make for me. I'm probably gonna forget the ingredients now. Maybe I'll make it for the kids. So ingredients, it's, it's like this uh, smoked sausage pasta. But the ingredients you need are smoked sausage, kielbasa, whatever you wanna call it, um, onion. What else did we put in it? I think, oh God, hold on, let me think. Parmesan cheese, you need the spiral, what is it called, the rotini, the spiral pasta, that's like woo, 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 woo. Um, are there peas in it too? I haven't made it in such a long time, I'm trying to think of what else, is I think it's peas. So while you're cooking, the pasta, you saute the smoked sausage and the onion in another pan. And you want the sh like the shredded Parmesan, not the grated. Um, and once the pasta's done and the smoked sausage and the and you can throw, if you use the frozen peas, I like to use the frozen peas for it. You can throw the peas in with the pasta the last few minutes that it's cooking. Um, but when everything is done, you just mix it all together and then just put like a shit ton of Parmesan cheese in it. And so the, um, whenever I made it, I would cook it in like butter and then when I dump the sausage and onion mixture into the pasta, there would be like butter mixed in with it from cooking it. And you just dump a crap ton of cheese on it. I feel like that's everything that was in that sausage pasta. But at the same time, I feel like I'm forgetting something in it. I might make that for the boys next week. Or I might make the tuna pasta, which is the same pasta, the rotini pasta. And then it's cans of tuna. Very small, fine dice of onion. And I was not in the right spot. And um, cheese, like chunks of, like, like small chunks of 
whatever kind of cheese you want. I want to say that my mom used to put in like the cheddar cheese. I don't know if my mom watches my stitch with me, so she'll probably correct me if I'm wrong on the ingredients. But um, yeah, tuna. And usually, like, I don't remember how my how exactly how my mom used to make it, but I know whenever I make it, I'll go ahead and make tuna like I would normally make tuna, like mix it with the mayonnaise and a uh, little bit of mustard and the relish. Like, I make just a big bowl of tuna fish, and then I just mix that in with a very small fine dice, like I said, of the onion. Because you don't want too much onion, because that's going to be gross. You'll get onion, raw onion breath. And, um and the cheese oh and and cooked peas that was the other thing too cooked peas in that as well that's why I'm I can't remember if I'm confusing the sausage pasta with that or not and it's good the next day too but my favorite time to eat the tuna pasta is the first day that I make it because the tuna is like cold but the pasta's hot and it just, oh man. And they get stuck in the, the tuna gets stuck in the crevices of the pasta. I know fish and pasta is very weird, but it's so good. I love it. Haven't made it in a really long time. Um, Trying to think of what else I can make for the boys. Ah, dang it. Hmm. What else can I make? I could do... <clears throat> oh, I could always do the crunchy onion barbecue chicken. That one's super easy. You want an easy chicken recipe? Take your chicken. Mm -hmm. You need chicken, chicken, barbecue sauce, Parmesan cheese, and French fried onions. That is it. Take your chicken. Shit. Oh, that's why. Hang on. Okay. Um, take your chicken and dunk it in the barbecue sauce so it's all coated all over and you crush up the french fried onions and mix it with the parmesan cheese and so you take your chicken that you dipped in the barbecue sauce and you press one side of it into the onion mixture and then you place the chicken in a dish Onion mixture side up, stick it in the oven, and cook it till it's done. And that's it. Super easy, super simple, super yummy. Could do that. I might make that for them. I haven't made that in a while. Let me end my thread because it's like. I'm gonna end up pulling that out again and it's gonna get on my nerves. Hmm. What's this one? Switch colors.
I will also sometimes make them I'm trying to cut down on the pasta dishes and I feel like I keep talking about pasta dishes but um, I will also make them like chicken alfredo you can make your alfredo sauce from scratch if you'd like I don't I use a jar um, any kind of pasta you want for the alfredo you can use angel hair you can use linguine you can use fettuccine whatever you want my mom used to make this with angel hair man it was so good but I could eat a box of angel hair by myself so I usually do thicker pasta for the kids I'll do like fettuccine or linguine fettuccine usually is what I get um you dice up some chicken, throw it in a pan, a little bit of oil, start cooking it, and you sprinkle it with the following seasonings until your heart tells you to stop. Onion powder, garlic powder, salt and pepper. Do I put anything else in it? Sometimes I put in a little bit of paprika. And then when the chicken is pretty much just about done, I throw in some soy sauce and some Worcestershire, Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce. And make your Make your little plate of your pasta with your Alfredo sauce and throw the chicken on it. Oh my God, the chicken is so good. So delicious. Could I make? I don't know. I got fancy with my burgers the last time I made them. Not the last time. One t I did. Oh, yeah. No, I did. I did get fancy. Well, with the boys' burgers. I made them mushroom Swiss burgers. Um, I cooked some mushrooms down in a pan and seasoned them with, like, garlic and... Uh, garlic and onion powder, salt and pepper, and a little bit of chili powder. And that little concoction is actually the creation of, or that little like mushroom thing was uh, brought to you by Lachlan because one time we were cooking him a side of mushrooms. He loves mushrooms. Yeah, I hate them. So I only cook them for, for him. And then Peyton sometimes will eat them too. But one time he was helping me cook and he was we were cooking his mushrooms. And he was like, what are we seasoning it with? And I was like, I don't know. What do you want to put in it? He was like, well, how about this? And he just started because I have like a one of those magnetic, like on the side of my refrigerator. My spices are like in like a little magnetic spice rack thing on the side of the fridge so he's sitting there eyeing the spices and he's like oh let's do this and I want to say it was like chili powder onion powder not shit yes chili powder but not a lot of it and um garlic powder is there anything else he put in it and I think some salt and pepper um so I and Peyton tried them and he thought I made them so he was like wow these are really good mom 
He's like, can I have some too? I was like, sure. And then after he was like eating it, I was like, you know, your brother made that. What? So, but, um, yeah, so I cooked the mushrooms how Lachlan had made them that one time. And then I had some Swiss cheese. I don't like Swiss cheese, but the boys do. So I get it for them. Um, but when I, the burgers were just about done or when the burgers were done, I put some Swiss cheese on them and the mushrooms and then I had fancy pants brioche buns that I had picked up at why is the, why is that thread doing that why is that acting like that that's okay um that I picked up at Aldi um so the boys the boys ate good that night I had, I had some onion rings as a side dish for them I made for them because sometimes I mean you know sometimes you always have those days where your cooking is like eh it's all right I won't make it again and then sometimes you make the food and you're like damn that was good I impressed myself I gotta come up with some ideas for dinner. Oh, I make a really good clam chowder too. That won't be good for grilled cheese sandwiches though. I made uh, one night for dinner. Oh my God, it was so good. I made my clam chowder and then I made club sandwiches to go with them. And like the traditional club sandwiches that you get in a restaurant with like three pieces of bread with turkey and ham and bacon, um, lettuce, tomato, mayonnaise. I toasted the bread. Oh my God, their sandwiches were so freaking amazing. And um, my clam chowder, it's like super simple and it's so good. So clam chowder ingredients. I like lots of clams, but I'm not, I don't cook them. I don't cook the fresh ones because I ain't got time for that mess of trying to steam the clams and wait for them to open. And then you have some that don't open and, you know, cleaning the, the sand off of them. I don't have time for all that. So I get canned clams and... I get like, I get a lot, <laughs> like six cans of them because <laughs> I want my clam chowder to taste like clams. Um, but I get like six cans of clams and a bottle of the clam juice, potatoes, Onions, celery, carrots, flour, heavy cream, butter, milk. Is that everything? Salt and pepper and red wine vinegar. So, in a pan, put some butter in the pan. Oh, if you want to get super fancy, you could also cook up some bacon. Pull the bacon. When the bacon is cooked, use the bacon fat to cook your veggies in. But you chop up the potatoes, the celery, carrots, onion, right? You cook that down in either the bacon fat or butter. It depends on my mood as to which one I do and if I have any bacon. And after you cook the veggies, you don't need to cook them all the way, just for a little bit so that they absorb the, um, 
the bacon fat or some of the butter and they get that initial raw veggie look off of them. Um, I usually cook them for about five to 10 minutes. Usually about, yeah, about five, between five and 10 minutes. And then I, uh, I will open all the cans of the clams and I will strain the clam juice into a bowl. And that one stitch right there, the thread is like really loose for some reason and it's bugging me. Um, but I'll strain the, the juice from the canned clams into a bowl and I will pour that juice into the veggies with the bottle of clam juice and then I cover the pan and I just let them kind of like simmer in that clam juice and then in a pot I put in oh you did I say flour you need flour too I put in a um I put a stick of butter in the pot and this will give you a lot of a lot of clam chowder so keep that in mind when I when I say what I'm using but I put a stick of butter in the in the pot and melt it down and then put some uh like I don't know about half a cup to anywhere from half to uh, actually three quarters to a cup of flour to make a roux so you cook the flour down for a few minutes to get that raw flour taste out and then you get like the big like the big container of the heavy cream and um, pour that in and you're whisking and you're whisking, constantly whisking to um, get that flour all mixed in. And then I will, depending, and it'll thicken it up the, the heavy cream. And depending on how thick it gets, I will pour milk in to thin it out also to give me more chowder liquid <laughs> depending on how much soup I want to make um, and usually by the time it and you just cook it until you get it as thick as you want it to be I like mine kind of thick um, and you can salt and pepper I don't really add actually hardly any salt at all. I I don't usually add salt, actually, not that I think about it. I just do pepper. Um, and you can add the pepper at any stage of the cooking process. You can add it to the veggies when they're cooking. You can put it into everything afterwards, whatever you want to do. Because sometimes I forget and I add it at the end. But um, once... Um, Usually by the time I am, because I don't start the roux and the cream stuff until I have uh, put the lid on the veggies. And so by the time I get the chowder part where I want it to be, the veggies are done. And I pour the veggie mixture into the chowder mixture and that will also immensely increase your soup volume because you got the clam juice too, don't forget. Um, and then you, at the last site, because you don't want to overcook the clams. So I throw the clams in at the very, very end because you don't want to over, overcook them because then they're rubbery and gross. So at the very, very end, I throw in the clams and then I also will pour in a few tablespoons. I don't, I don't measure it. This is why I can never write a cookbook. I don't really measure, I just look at it. I just pour some red wine vinegar in. Like, I eyeball it. And it's like, yeah, that looks like a good amount. But I put in red wine vinegar at the end as well. And it is so freaking delicious. That's my secret ingredient. Although I guess it's not really a secret since I'm putting it out there for all of the internet to hear, right? Not really a secret anymore. 
Um, and that red wine vinegar, it really does make a difference because I made clam chowder one time and I always have red wine vinegar, even though I, even though honestly the only time I use it is when I make clam chowder. So I always have it because it takes a while to get through a bottle, right? Well, one time I went to go make my clam chowder and I didn't have any red wine vinegar. I was out and I hadn't picked up more. And I was like, you know what? It's not a it's not a vital ingredient. So I'll just cook it without the red wine vinegar. And I did that and <laughs> the boys started eating it and they were like, what's different about this? And I was like, what do you mean? They were like, they were like, don't get me wrong. Both of them said it. Like, separate from each other because one didn't hear the other one say it they were like don't get me wrong it's really good but there's you've made it better before <laughs> they were like it's not bad we're not trying to say that you cooked it bad but usually when you make it it tastes better and I was like well I was out of red wine vinegar the stuff I said the stuff I put in at the end they were like that must be it <laughs> So it really does make a difference and man, it is so good. And then if you cooked the bacon, if you, if you cooked the bacon with like when I want to get ultra fancy, I usually will just top it with the oyster crackers. But if you want to get ultra fancy, you can get some green onions, dice those up and sprinkle those on top. And if you cooked bacon to cook the veggies in the bacon fat, if you have the cooked bacon, you can chop up the bacon and sprinkle that on top too. That's like ultra fancy. Basic is the crackers. Super basic is no, no toppings, just the soup. How you usually get it in a restaurant. Basic is topping it with the oyster crackers. Fancy is adding the green onions. And then ultra fancy would be adding the bacon but yeah man making that clam chowder with the club sandwich oh i bet i'm gonna do that this week i'm gonna do that for the kids this week because i could really go for for that i don't even know where the hell i am i've just been filling this in here hold on i gotta figure out where i'm at One moment, I haven't really been paying attention. I'm just throwing stitches here, there, and everywhere. This is what I get for not like really, really paying attention. <sighs> Hang on. Okay, so that is there. Then that. Oh, that's why. Those two light gray stitches up there, I don't believe, are in the right spot. That's okay. It doesn't matter. It's his little porcupine, not porcupine, hedgehog, hedgehog coloring. Or maybe I'm just not up as high as I thought I was. <laughs> I'm not up. Oh, that's it. I'm not as high as I thought I was on here. Okay. I'm good. I know where I am now. All right. Moving on. I'll just go across here. I was looking too high up on the chart. <laughs> I was like, where I thought I was, was like way up here. That's why I was like, wait a minute, hold on, I'm lost. <sighs> yeah, I think I'm gonna make clam chowder and club sandwiches for dinner next week. Oh, it's gonna be so good, I'm so excited.
and what else am I gonna make? I don't know. I gotta make grilled cheese. Maybe we'll just do soup and sandwiches all week long. <laughs> soup and some kind of sandwich all week long. Lachlan really wants grilled cheese and you know, you gotta have tomato soup with grilled cheese. Ooh, or I can make chili. <gasps> I'm gonna have to actually watch this stitch with me so I can remember what I'm saying. Maybe I'll do chili and grilled cheese sandwiches. Oh my God, that's gonna be so good. Yes. So clam chowder and club sandwiches. Grilled cheese sandwiches with chili. Now I gotta think of what else I can make. Hmm. Could always do like, um, Paninis, too. Like the grilled chicken. Oh, I could do like a grilled chicken caprese panini. I could even make my life easier and get the already cooked grilled chicken. And, um, the slices of the mozzarella, not like. Not like the block of mozzarella, but like the fresh mozzarella, the fancy pants mozzarella with some basil leaves and sliced up tomato. Put it on a nice thing of bread. That'd be good. I might do that too. I'm excited about those two dinners though, the clam chowder and the chili actually I'm more yeah I am definitely gonna do that that'll be good I'm gonna finish off this thread and then I'm probably gonna end this video we're almost at an hour. What are some of y'all's favorite things to make? To cook? Like, you don't have to sit there and write down recipes. Just shoot some ideas at me. Give me give me something different. Oh, you know what? One time I made... I, I don't know. how. Where did I see this? I made chopped cheese one time for the kids. If you don't know what chopped cheese is, it's in New York. It's basically a New York version of a Philly cheesesteak. It's like ground ground meat. Where did I see the recipe? Maybe I saw it on Pinterest. But it's basically like ground beef, and I don't remember how I seasoned it. But um, chopped up. Did it have onions and peppers in it? Diced up? And then you top it with cheese, and I think you put Worcestershire sauce in it. I haven't made it in a while. Maybe I'll make that for the kids, too. I gotta find my recipe, though. Um, but it's funny because I'd never heard of it and somehow I came across a recipe for it and I'm like, what, this looks like a Philly cheesesteak, but it's not like cheesesteak cheesesteak. It's like ground beef and I made it and the kids loved it. Put it on some hoagie rolls. And it's funny because there's like a, uh, restaurant that's going to be opening up near my house. And one of the things that they're advertising that they're going to sell is chopped cheese. And I saw it, uh, I saw the advertisement for it on the neighborhood page, like for the town I live in. And it was so funny because like half of the people on there are like, what's chopped cheese? What is that? And then the other half are all kinds of excited about it. And they're responding to the what's chopped cheese comments with recipes and articles about this sandwich. <laughs> like, oh my God, it's so good. You're going to love it. 
So, anywho. Yeah, leave, leave me a comment. Let me know what your, some of your favorite meals are that you can make. If it's nothing I've, I've made before, I'll look it up and I'll get a recipe for it and I'll try it out. So, anywho. Let me cut this thread. I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. I got 164 stitches in. All right. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section down below. Say bye-bye to my little panda butt. Hello. Um, and uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any ideas for topics I could talk about in my next stitch with me, go ahead and let me know down below because I was like kind of riding a struggle bus tonight. So, take care. Happy stitching. Get a lot of stitches in, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, everybody. Bye.